Hello, uh, I'm Glenn Tracy. I'm teaching TE 826 online this, uh, this semester, and I'm doing a quick little introductory video. Uh, I'm still putting together the details of all the assignments. The first assignment is already up. It's a, uh, you're going to be doing a, uh, a version of a culture map. It's a little different if you've done a culture map with me. This one's a little different. Uh, I've changed some of the discussion, but um, that's going to be on the discussion page. Um, and I wanted to post this just because I'm in a video making mood. And when you're working online in your office, you get a little crazy. And you know me, I don't need any more of it. So, um, so this course is basically, um, we're going to be talking, it's called Content Methods and Strategies in ESL. And here's the game plan for this course. Most of you are probably already teaching. If you haven't or you have taught, you should be knowledgeable about making lesson plans. And part of our work this semester will be, uh, I'll be introduce you to what's called the PSYOP or the, uh, let me grab that out of my bag. This is the book. It may have a fourth version now, third version, it's all the same. It's called uh, Making Content Comprehensible for Con English Learners. This is a I wouldn't call it scientific, but a very well organized, structured, and well evolved, developed uh, presentation to help you organize as you make lessons and teach English as a second language, taking into account your students' backgrounds and uh, what you need to know about your students, which is quite a bit. And that's why I'm doing this little culture map version with you. Uh, first assignment is it's a nice way just to get students to draw something and to have something to refer to because in the goal in teaching English as second language is to get students to read, write, speak, and listen, all four. It's not like in, with English speakers and you already have kids that talk a lot and you're just worried about their reading and writing. You have to address all four of those modalities. So that's one thing I'm going to be harping on or focusing on there's going to be a there's a video goes with this that will show uh, and I've got additional videos on differentiation uh, different ways to teach not all of them are ESL related but but they're good solid stuff for ESL I don't claim to have all the answers but I find this is a very good structured uh, textbook you'll need it and it is it's often used in many schools. I know Grand Island for a while has used it in Nebraska, uh, but it gives you a basis. Uh, you're not just starting out trying to think up something or find you find a book. And there's, so you have examples with the videos of how classes are taught and not just classes for newcomers. A lot of teaching now involves mixes of, of uh, what I call English speakers or, you know, the students that are native speakers of English that are already in the United States and ESL kids or English learners, we're now calling them ELs, English learners, not even English language learners, trying to get all the acronyms reduced down. Um, and I have another book, and I, someone told me that it wasn't available in bookstore, but actually anything by Tomlinson on, not Tomlinson, what am I looking at? This is my book from my other class, sorry but it's a book on differentiation. And it shows different ways to teach, to uh, reach students that have maybe difficulties. This doesn't necessarily mean language, but it's differentiation in terms of being able to work with students uh, with limitations in, um, let's see if I got the book here. I don't know where I put it. Well, I will have it. It's by Tomlinson. It's uh, it's in, in the syllabus. It's teaching uh, mixed classrooms, differentiation in mixed classrooms. And I got some really good videos. So I can show you people teaching. There are written examples in here, and, and certainly I have some examples that go with the book and the video that will be available to you online with this class. 
but then also I like to throw a lot of other stuff at you too. Um, so a principal focus will be on strategies, preparing lessons. You will do a little unit plan. Anything you do in this class, mo or at least most of it, I want it to be focused on your actual teaching. So you will design a lesson that if you had an ESL kid in, say, your fourth grade science class, that you could take into account their, um, their background. And so you would be able to, oh, here it is, Tomlinson. These books look like. It's called this. It's, uh, she has a number of books, How to Differentiate Instruction in Mixed Ability Classrooms. This second edition, you know, fancy second, third edition, whatever you get. I can work with it, okay? But I just want you to have a book on differentiation. Um, I know how expensive books are and I'm very upset about it because I got kids in school and I had to pay for these. And you know, when you rent a psychology book and pay uh, $130 to rent the book, that's when I start having problems. You know, that's not right. It needs to be investigated, that's a scam. Okay, I've got my two cents in there. Um, as I said, I'm working on the syllabus. I'm trying to give incredible detailed syllabus so that I'll, I will do, I will different, I will veer from the syllabus. So don't try to think that I'll get everything done ahead of time and be finished with the class. I'm not doing a, this is not a feed sack class where I just put things in a feed sack and if you eat it all, you're done. It's not that way. I want interaction in discussion, and that's why we're going to do discussion uh, quite a bit in this class. There'll be about 12 discussions. Most weeks, you will have a discussion. Um, I also like to talk to people on the phone, believe it or not, or on Zoom. We can do that. Uh, I'm interested in your situation. That's why on this first assignment, I really want to know a lot about your background, especially educational and your circumstance your desire to, why you want to teach, uh, work with ESL kids, uh, what kind of even, what do you see yourself doing in five years if you're not already doing what you want to do? So I've had people that are in China take this class. So we got a wide latitude of options and I try to work with everybody. Uh, English is second language, which I got into by pure accident in the ni late 1970s. I happened to be a, a Spanish teacher, not a very good one, but I was, I had Spanish in college, but my focus was on history. And they needed somebody to teach Spanish, and I got stuck teaching a freshman class, uh, just basics. But what was interesting is they need somebody to teach English to a group of Persian students from Iran. And that was a time when we had a big controversy with Iran. If anybody knows about the hostage crisis, that was when, that's when it occurred. And it was very political and very tense. And so I was drafted in to be the ESL teacher. I had all these Persian students who speak Farsi, by the way. And by the way, you're going to, I don't want to give it away. I'm going to play a trick on you about that in the near future. But anyhow, you're going to, uh, I, I taught English to them, but one guy was from Panama and spoke Spanish. So I spoke Spanish to him in class and I got very, I was criticized by the students. They were very upset that I communicated him, with him in his own language, but I didn't talk to them in Farsi, which of course, how could I earn, you know, I only spoke one other language. Picking up a language is not just like getting stamps. It's very difficult if you've ever done that. Um, but that was, that basically led me into ESL. When I first got into ESL, people said, why are you doing that? Are you going to go overseas? And I said, well, I don't know, maybe. I was actually planning to, but then they said, well, you'll never get a job in the United States because we all speak English. Well, guess what? <laughs> it's called immigration and refugees and all kinds of stuff. We're in the middle of controversy now even, so... Um, you can kind of tell where I'm coming from. I like people with diverse backgrounds. I teach classes on diversity, but I like other cultures intensely. I think they're fascinating. I like philosophy. I like history. I like politics. Not particularly lately, but, but 
my point is that that I like a lot of things and I enjoy the world. So I like to learn about lots of things. So I will probably, that will come across, I hope. Um, I just wanted to say a little bit about who I am. Uh, I teach, I've been here about 19 years. I would say 20, but it sounds like a long time. Um, I have uh, three kids, a new grandson, and I'm very happy about that. And I got a son who's a researcher in toxicology, pharmacology, neurology, and in Davis, California, at the University of California, Davis. Uh, I can only say that I, I know that he cuts tiny, tiny holes in neurons and infects uh, mice with a modified cold or rabies virus that's designed to hold luminescent uh, material that shows the path of emotional thoughts or communication between the amygdala and the cerebellum. And he photographs it, operates on them. Um, it's amazing, you know, what he does. I, I always tell people I taught him everything he knows. Um, and, and I got another, my other son is the one that got married and has a, a grandson and I'm very happy about that. He's only two months old. And then my daughter's going to get married next year. And uh, so I'm very busy, you know, family-wise. Um, what else do I want to say? I, other than I'm going to post the, uh, this video and I'm going to put the syllabus up. I hope put up tonight. I may put it up and then finish the rest of the stuff. I got the syllabus done, but I'm trying to just fill in week to week in detail. Um, but like I said, I sometimes change, and so I may get halfway through and change some assignments, depending on how we're going. Um, so I look forward to, to hearing from you and to see your maps, because your map should be a nice, big, colorful thing, 11 by 17. You take a picture of it. Make sure that it looks big on your page, even if you have to mail it to me as a, what is it, JPEG or whatever, and I have to mail it to everybody in class. I want everybody... I want everybody to look at everybody's map and briefly read over all of your introductions. It's quite interesting. I, I love the discussion now that I've personalized it and I, I really focus on thinking and also getting to know what people think. I wanna know your opinion, what your situation is. I'm also here to help you. So if I can help you with information, uh, I like to make my assignments pertinent to what you're doing. So you're not just making some, I don't tell you to do a research paper, which you'll gladly throw away once it's done. Uh, I want you to do lessons and units that you could actually use in your own class if you ever get, or if you have ESL situations. Uh, I'm also gonna do a little section I call, I made it, uh, on the history of English second language learning and different techniques have been used in the past. You know some of these, one of them is called the grammar translation method, which is if you were in a language class and the teacher told you, translate this Spanish paragraph into English or do the reverse, which uh, is really not a particularly useful exercise anymore when you're trying to learn to speak Spanish and people have you translate because all you do is get a dictionary. You really don't know what you're doing. You have no feel for the language. Remember, language is primarily spoken and it should be uh, an act of pleasure to speak the language. Um, if you ever used your Spanish or French or whatever language, German, English, whatever, if you ever use it, when you use it the first time and actually communicated with somebody, it was kind of made you feel cool. You know, I like French. I even have a beret, which I don't know where I put it, but I'm very proud of it. Oh, here it is. I got it because I've never had a beret. What do you think? You know, but I also have like over there, you see behind me, you see my Yankee championship, my Explorer hat, my uh, German cowboy hat. If you notice, that's the German flag. And I have other hats. I have, I got some of the hats from the uh, uh, YMCA, you know. Yes, I took lessons in disco and I'm going to show you some of that stuff. 
because you'll probably need relief at some point when you get stressed out trying to do graduate classes and teach and stuff. Um, um, anyhow, I think I'm just going to stop right there because I'll talk too long and then you'll get bored. But um, you can see I like books and I like a lots of things, you know. Audrey Hepburn, very classy. Um, and I like coffee. You can see the little coffee thing. And I, of course, drink a barista coffee from over here. I'm addicted to it. So I just wanted to welcome you to the class. And uh, I will post uh, the, I'll post what I got of the syllabus right now. And I'm going to go get some coffee and come back over and work. But if I don't get it all finished, you'll at least have, you know, the basics, you know, what you need to buy and all that stuff. And some of the lessons, which will be uh, the first lesson's already up. So thank you. And uh, I hope you enjoy doing your map and your commentary. Remember, it's an extra, it's uh, more points than the regular one. I think it's 30 because you have to talk a lot about, uh, you have to, in your third paragraph on your discussion, you're supposed to talk about your teaching. And uh, uh, welcome to the class. Thank you. I like Edgar Allan Poe, you can tell. And Ghostbusters up there. That's Ghostbuster hat. And that's the soup Nazi from Seinfeld. I like soup soup Nazi in the Terminator skull from Terminator and uh, books and family and stuff. I'll show you the weird stuff in my office as we go through the semester. So thank you very much.